because women are becoming more independent, men kind of have no choice but to accept the fact we're y'all equals. We've always been, but we've never been seen that way. What up, y'all? I'm Josh and Easy here once again with, with another, another quality video. video. So we are bringing you guys yet another Eat and Chill, one of you guys' favorite videos from us. It's been a long time since we've done a quality Eat and Chill. Quality Eat and Chill. You know, chill. we were looking at the channel recently and we were like, they really liked us eating and talking. We mm. can do that. So we are going to try to attempt to do that for you guys at least once a week. So make sure your post notifications are turned on. Because we coming with it. We coming with that fire. We're I don't know if y'all noticed yet. The consistency is starting to come but, but, back. But we coming with some fire. That's we all I'm going to say. Fire. So Josh decided on today's topic. I'm going to go ahead and let you handle that then. As I'm doing that, I'm just going to be preparing uh, my food. Oh, oh we got Chipotle. What's uh, wrong with us? It's been a minute. Know. Let's show them the food. So my bowl consists of the carne. Asada. Uh -huh. It has the black beans in there. You know, I got the veggies up in there as well. I normally don't like doing the meat on there, but like the carne asada, I tried it one time. It's actually pretty fire. And then of course I got the vinaigrette. This finna go drip. Gotta have the. Gotta have. Sorry. Gotta, gotta have, have that vinaigrette. On top. All right, my turn. My turn. So the only thing I didn't get like Josh's is guacamole and lettuce. I don't get that on mine. Mine is just cheese, corn. Asada, you said it's yeah, asada. Carne. Two rices, carne. black beans. Uh uh, your face is in it, not my my food. Come on now, come on. There we go. It knows what the focus on. Carne, oh the mild sauce. Is it mild sauce or mild salsa? Mild salsa. Okay, mild salsa, and I think that's it. Oh, and we got uh bell peppers. Oh, oh, that's the veggies. Veggies, yeah, they call. It. That's why you're looking at me crazy. Like what? Veggies. So we're gonna go ahead and hop into this. Let's go ahead and pray first, though. Lord bless this food that we're about to receive for nourishment of our bodies. Bless the hand hands that prepared it. Bless the mouths that are about to receive it. Bless the people viewing this. Hopefully the knowledge that we kick to them will help them grow, learn, and build better relationships in their lives it as well as in ours. Mm -hmm. um, these are another blessings we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Tell them how you even came up with this topic. Like, why did you want to do this topic? So I was doing a little reading in my Bible and then I forget the exact verse it said, but it said women submit to your husbands. And I was like, I don't know type of relationship that we have now mm -hmm. doesn't give me the vibe that it would ever be like a submit authoritative kind of thing even yeah. though we're not married you're saying even when we get married you still don't think it would be like that yeah right? yeah yeah so i had to do some research on it so then i said to myself like well should women submit to men or like is that a thing anymore or is that like an old played out kind of ideal mm -hmm. that like women need to stay in their place and stuff like because like we're looking like what a hundred years back, mm -hmm. there was like a certain stigma that women are kind of like to be seen, not heard mm -hmm, type of thing. Mm -hmm. And that's my question. Like, what is submissive? Like, yeah. What is the definition What is of submitting? That? So, what does that mean? I looked exactly? up a bunch of definitions. I had the dictionary out. I was going crazy. I even did a couple little internet searches trying to figure out like exact definitions. So, like, there's multiple versions of what submitting means. Now, if we're talking about like a Webster dictionary kind of submit, it's in terms of like allowing authority to rule over you. So, like, we submit to the laws mm. of America. Mm -hmm. Or like, if a police officer pulls you over, you submit to that authority and you pull over if he turns on his lights. Mm -hmm. Your parents, if they tell you to do something, Thing. You submit to their authority and you listen to them. That's the dictionary version. That's the dictionary version of submit. Uh -huh. It's basically to give authority away. Mm -hmm. The biblical definition is actually a little more interesting. And that's why I had to make sure that like they were looking at the same thing. Because like today's definition of submit and the Bible's version, if you read those together, then you get this version of submission that makes it look very like negative, right? Very I negative. I feel like that word just sounds so negative. It's, it's so like, no, I'm not gonna submit to you. Yeah, it's like, no, I'm not. It's like almost like slavery, you know, like or like ownership, yeah, or like yeah. somebody we, controls you. And as an adult, you never want to feel like somebody's controlling your life. As an adult, no. As a black person, especially coming out of yeah. the era that we just came out of, I'm sure, like man, woman, nobody wants to submit anymore. You know, we right. want to be individual. So, so what the Bible say? The biblical version, from what I gathered, because there was multiple interpretations, but the biblical version is basically to serve in love. So not in a sense that like you're owned by that person, but submitting is basically like saying like, I'm not trying to rule over you, nor am I trying to rule under you. I'm basically serving you out of the goodness of my heart instead of like the power of your will. That's what submission means in the Bible? In the biblical sense, from what I gathered, there's multiple different definitions of it. But Here's my thing. From both definitions uh -huh. coming together, this is now the Josh definition of submit. Mm -hmm. 
which is basically if I'm thinking of submit in a term of like relationship, I submit and you submit. Like we both come to a, a, a submissive point right. where it's like I'm not trying to be your authoritative figure where you're not trying to be my authoritative figure. Mm -hmm. And normally in relationships, there's kind of like a, a counterbalance or like a, a power struggle of like who holds the ball. Right. The ball in your court is the ball in my court. But the generations are changing though. Yeah. And my definition of submission is basically like we're just holding the ball together. Instead of I like, like I'm trying to like hold it over your head or you're trying to hold it over mine. Actually, yeah. And I mean, my other thing about this is I really want women to start like holding their standards higher. In terms of? Cause like maybe some men and women view that submission thing as the definitions that we just kind of discussed. Whereas like- And it works for some people. It works for some people. But here's my thing with that. Uh, if you're gonna go by that definition, one, women, you need to find a man worth submitting to. Mm. Um, and when I say that- That's a word. You should say that again. Women, you need to find a man worth, worth. submitting to. Uh huh. Just because the Bible says submit to your husband doesn't mean that you should have you to give submit up all your power to someone who like, has no direction, mm -hmm. someone who has no idea of like where they're going in life. Like submitting to someone would require that that person lead you leads yes has the capabilities or the capacity to lead you mm -hmm. in a direction that's beneficial to your life mm -hmm. or beneficial to your growth or well-being or your family's growth and well-being i don't see why some women would choose to submit to men that ain't nothing yeah essentially don't have their ish whoop, together yeah their ish together mm -hmm. and men if you're believing that your wife should submit to you you should honestly have to step your game up and realize that like significant other because not everybody's married you're right your significant other you should come to the realization that you have to get your ish together mm -hmm. or you need to have a sense of direction because no one wants to submit or follow anybody that doesn't know where they're going but some people do though yes that's the thing that's an issue i know i was gonna say my big issue or my yeah well it's not an issue but the thing that comes to my mind especially thinking about the bible version of submission is why does it tell women to do that women or wives submit to your husbands why doesn't it say vice versa like also husbands make sure you submit to your wife there's they don't say that and i don't understand that almost as if a woman can't lead or i don't know i just don't get that i don't get that like to me, in my head, that verse or that section of the Bible is kind of like, I'm saying women come second in a hierarchy because they're telling us to be submissive to y'all, but not vice versa. And I think that's a problem. I've also been doing research on masculine and feminine energy. Mm -hmm. And before I get into this, please disassociate masculine and feminine energy from male and female because women can possess a combination of the two and men can possess a combination of the two. The goal of masculine energy is to like achieve an objective. The objective of feminine energy is to embody love. So I think that was very masculinity charged. What, the Bible? That, that verse. Mm. Cause in a sense, if someone is focused on love and someone is focused on objective, I would assume that you would want to go with the person focused on the objective in terms of leading. But that's an assumption. It's an assumption. That it's the male, because you just said to not associate masculine and feminine with male and female. So the fact that they said wives, which are female, submit to your husband, which are male, they're making the assumption that the male has more of the masculine energy to make things happen. It's an assumption. And I also think that the Bible was written by men. So. At that's this, a that's a fact. It's a fact. <laughs> like, and back then, again, we not were not this, valued. Yes, our opinions. It just wasn't Nothing. valued. If it was like that a hundred years ago, I know for a fact that it was even worse during the Bible. During the Bible times. If I had a say in it, I would have liked that verse to say, "Wives submit to your husbands, and husbands submit to your wives." It should be an equal thing. It should be an equal thing. Like, isn't there a verse about um, like? Having a partner that you're equally yoked with. Mm -hmm. Like, why does it talk about equality there? But when it comes to submission, it's not equality there. Why do they deserve to have someone that's equal to them? Or why do y'all men deserve to have somebody equal to them, yet they're not treated equally in the marriage? Because the woman is supposed to submit. These are the things that bother my mind. <laughs> These are the things that confuse me. Yeah. Because a lot of times, like, I don't know. Me personally, in this phase in my life. Right I'm, now? Yeah. Like in my 20s, I don't have it all together. Who does? Who does? Mm -hmm. And I'm still in the process of trying to like find myself and who I am and like what my deepest purpose is. So to say like, okay, let's say we get married in the next two years, more than likely. I will have not found out my true, I don't think, 
I will have found everything out. I don't think I will have had everything together at that point. And to then say, oh, we're married now, so you need to submit to my confusion. Uh huh. It just wouldn't make sense. Mm -hmm. It seems as though if I'm living at my edge and being realistic with myself, you have a better sense of direction of where you want to go with your life than I do with mine. Because mm -hmm. you're in like the midst of like your dream career. Mm -hmm. Whereas like I'm in the middle of my career. Is it my dream career? Eh, I wouldn't say that. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm doing what I have to do to take care of my house. Right. And I mean that in itself, you could chalk that up and say, yeah, that's me with a purpose, which is to take care of my household. But there's no like... I'm not really reaching at this point for anything that is like my truest, deepest passion. Mm -hmm. So I would never require of you to submit to me until, well, even until, but I would never I'm require say, you. <laughs> I would never require you to submit to me. Unless there was. I don't like the word require. I, you, you can say like more so you would never look for me to do that. Yeah. Because require is like you have this standard if I don't reach it then you won't be with me. Even though you're saying that's not your standard. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. The wording require, like, I wouldn't require you to pick me up from work every day. Well, like, I'm just you know what I mean? I'm speaking from the terms, because some men will require that. If they're, like, if they're true to the Bible, mm -hmm. they will require their woman to, i.e., submit. But I'm saying, hopefully this relays the message to them that if you're going to require that, you need to have your ish completely and totally together. And you need to be okay with your woman leaving if she doesn't, want to meet that requirement. Yeah, she doesn't want to meet that requirement. Mm -hmm. I don't see what's wrong with being equal in something. Sometimes I say to myself, like, why doesn't everybody think like me? And then all of a sudden I think it's because we're not the same people. Mm -hmm. Some people do believe men should be the head of the household. And I feel like when I hear head of the household, I do think... Like, like final decision? Maybe final... Like, if I had a good grasp on direction, I think that would be it. Like, Even if you did, I don't feel like the woman I am, I would be okay with you making the final decision on life decisions for us. I feel like it's a partnership. It's an equal thing. So if you wanted to invest $100,000 out of our bank account into a property, you get last word on that? I don't agree with that. Like, that's something you discuss. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's a, that's a major thing. That's a lot of money. Like, even minor kind of things, like where our kids go to school or just little stuff from the smallest to the biggest stuff i think when it's a marriage that's an equal thing y'all make decisions somebody might end up compromising within it but somebody kind of making the decision for stuff i absolutely don't agree with just one person doing that absolutely not yeah it's it, that's why i don't really get the whole submissive thing when the bible talks like it just doesn't make sense to me in the generation that we live in i don't know i see it in my house i see my dad as the head of the household but i see my mom as like the neck and so, like, the head's not moving without the neck. Mm -hmm. You can have that role. Like, I'm sure because he wants to have the manly father figure as an example to the son. There's certain subconscious cues that take place with sons and fathers. That if a son doesn't see his father as an authoritative figure, he loses respect for his father. I get that, but I don't think but us making sure our marriage is equal will take away from our son respecting you or seeing you as an authority. More so, I feel like, I feel like he would have more value and respect for women. Like, oh, dad views mommy as an equal. Not as somebody he has authority over or can boss around or whatever, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. we're just in a new generation. It's a new generation. And I feel like things. because women are becoming more independent, men kind of have no choice but to accept the fact we're y'all equals. We've always been, but we've never been seen that way. At this point now, because there's so many more, like, things women can do and accomplish and are doing and accomplishing, mm -hmm. you don't have a choice but to see us for our worth now. Whereas back in the day, they made us be silent. They didn't allow us to vote. They like, you know what I mean? Like we've always been the oppressed and men were the oppressors. And I feel like, especially like you said, back in the Bible time, if it was like that 50 years ago, imagine was, how that was centuries ago. When they wrote it. That's why I just don't agree with it. But back to what you were saying, I don't feel like our son won't have respect for you or view you as an authority figure because you view me as your equal or you treat me like your equal or we, you consult me about things or vice versa. I I'm think saying, that shows a healthy relationship. Yes, I'm saying if it took like a, let's say... Now, if I overthrew you... Yes, that's what I'm that's saying. That's different. That's what I'm saying. Uh-huh. I'm saying if it took like a role reversal... Mm -hmm. I get that. And some women do that and I don't agree with it. And I, if I took that submissive and like, now you're the head of the household, mm -hmm. you're making like... Our our sons would not respect. Or you said plural. You think we have multiple? Yeah, I think we have multiple. Okay. I, I don't think they would have respect for me. I got that. So that's why I think a lot of men, instead of like trying to find that even balance, will just say, I just need to be on top. Even if it's just a little, I just need to be uh -huh. 
on top just to make sure that my sons don't try me because like a son will lose like if a son finds out it's natural it's not even like uh if he wants to or not subconsciously it's the same with dogs the same with like wolf packs if they sense weakness timidness or like non-authoritative energy the next dog steps up now take kids out the picture though and you're just saying it's a matter of the sons or the kids seeing that the dad gets respect or whatever from the woman. What if there's no kids in the picture? Instead of that now taking that energy, this is just, this is not me speaking for myself. This is me speaking for men. Are I, you speaking for some men? You shouldn't say all. Oh, this is all yeah, kind of you're just. you're right. This is all kind of like just subjective. Out there, yeah. I, I, I think it's just a natural masculinity thing that they don't want to yield power. Mm -hmm. I just don't think they want to yield any power. And I think that's kind of the issue that's been taking place for centuries now. Men just don't want to like give up the power that they've been granted. We see it in everything. We see it in America with white people, black people. There's never going to come a point where like the white congregation comes together and be like, hey, here you go. You know, it's just not going to happen. White people will never be like, hey, yeah, we run it and we're giving up our power to you guys now. They'll mm -hmm. never just like pass the torch on to black people and be like, hey, you got it, man. Mm -hmm. This is your country now. It just doesn't happen. Power doesn't give up power. Power is taken. I got that. Okay, so in a sense, it's kind of the same with men and women. Like, power isn't given up, power is kind of taken. And men almost see that as a challenge. But and I that's feel like you a back and forth. have given up your power in certain scenarios in our relationship to equal things out. And that's because I personally believe that it shouldn't be that way. Uh huh. I'm not... Well, I guess also, even if you didn't give it up, we just wouldn't be together. Yeah, I'm not... Well, yeah, that. And I'm not, like, totally insecure in the fact that I'm okay with being your equal instead of being the authoritative figure. Mm -hmm. I'm perfectly fine with us coming to a mutual agreement on decisions or us, like, both being contributors to the household. Hell, I think at, at some point, when kids come into the equation, we're going to have to figure out who's going to take care of the kids. And I'm okay with us being equal in that, too. Now, granted, I can't breastfeed. That's <laughs> Like, that's definitely all you. You know, it's funny though. I think it's important to touch on the fact that you haven't always had this mentality. Yeah, because when we first met, society. you wanted me to be a stay at home mom like your mom. Remember we had that conversation? Yeah, I grew up off it. Yeah. I didn't really like. I've done a whole lot of growth. You have since we've been together, honestly. There has been an entire amount of growth. You're like a new freaking place. person. <laughs> Since I first got into this relationship. And if you guys have watched like our year one, two, three, fours, whatever, you'll Angels, see the, the maturity and the has progress. Grown. Mm -hmm. If you even watch our YouTube videos, there's been a sense of like maturity that's taken place. And I think that's just me kind of reaching a new level of adulthood. Mm -hmm. So I feel as though. And I kind of demanded that out of you though. Well, not, no, let me not say demand it. Let me change that. Yeah, I kind of, I feel like well, this is a required type of thing. You I kind of required, required a partner who could be goofy and fun and stuff, but also be serious and know when to turn things on and off. You know, you've always been intellectual. That was never the problem. It was more so like the emotional maturity we always mm -hmm. kind of struggled with. And I feel like now we're kind of starting to balance out in year five. We will be doing a, a year four video for y'all really soon though. Because we'll make year five in like two months, three months. Yeah. Either way, you can see the growth in you definitely and I'm not gonna take full credit for that but I do feel like being with me kind of forced you what was up to you to decide if you wanted to do it or not if yeah. you wanted to mature if you wanted to excel whatever but being with someone like me that's kind of what I like seek from my partner so it's either like either you can do this or you can't and this is a perfect example of what I mean as she refused to submit in a in a what kind of, ah, I wish there was another word than submit but you, you refused to lower your standard mm -hmm. for me. And I had a choice of either to raise my bar of excellence to meet your standard mm -hmm. or fall by the wayside and just let this relationship crumble. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what a lot of women are going to have to do if they want to find a quality man. Quality If ladies. you want to find a good man, you're going to have to set your standard of excellence high. And you know what? We have men followers too. So I want like that to be known too. It's vice versa as well. We're, we're more so speaking from the women point of view because we're talking about women submitting. But there are times when men have low standards for women too. Not all women are deserving of a great man. That's you know what true. I mean? Like it goes both ways. It's not just one gender is great and you know, mm -hmm. more so women. Yes, we a lot of us need to do way better, but some men need to do better with their selections too. Yeah, most. I, I feel like sometimes men just go for like the pretty, the pretty, the pretty and submissive type. Mm. I think a lot of men go for that mm -hmm. because they don't want a lot of pushback 
in terms of mm. where they're going with it, like very, very self-absorbed, like uh -huh. very self-directional. Like they're more concerned with self and their self-objectives than a relationship. Mm -hmm. So if they find somebody that challenges their direction, i.e. doesn't submit to their direction, then they're done with it. Mm -hmm. I'd be challenging the crap out of you. <laughs> but like, yeah, you challenged my direction. At first, it's annoying. Mm -hmm. I will say that. I'm going to come to truth with it. It's annoying as as hell sometimes uh -huh. when you like challenge an idea or a direction that I go but it's up to me to either accept the challenge and prove you wrong mm -hmm. or take what you have into consideration and really take a self check like maybe she's right maybe she's right so I feel also like a devil's advocate thing I think we yeah. do that both for each other kind of like you sure about that and that's the part of like the equal thing in a relationship. Yeah. Because if you want a woman to be submissive so she doesn't challenge you and then you make a stupid decision that messes up your like I have heard so many stories about like more so it being a, a relationship where the woman is submissive, the man runs things, and he messes up everything financially. Everything. And we always say how that's one of the top things that can ruin a marriage. If there's like a situation where there's no pushback, I feel like it's just like you jumped on a train going hundred miles an hour, you don't know where it's going. Mm -hmm. And it's likely to crash at some point, but you don't know that. Yeah. It could sail, it could crash. Mm -hmm. And but even if when you do prove your direction to me or whatever, I still wouldn't feel 100% comfortable like, okay, you can handle everything. It doesn't matter because even if I got to the point where I had direction for everything, you wouldn't want to do that either because yeah. it's our life. Like we're to being in a relationship, being in a marriage or whatever, it's a union. But you're still individuals. You're still yeah. supposed to have your own career paths, your own goals and stuff like that. Stuff together, yes. But that I, I know people say like when you become married or whatever, two becomes one. You become one in a sense. But you're still supposed to have your individuality. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I feel like handing over your power to somebody else because they. have Proven themselves to be a leader. A good. You get leader. what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like it just really doesn't make any sense to me. Why anyone would submit 100%. I feel like some people are truly okay with just saying, I don't want to deal with the stress of being the leader of the family. Mm. I don't want to deal with that. that. I see, I see, I see. It's, you know, that's hard for me to like shift. It's hard for you to grasp. Yeah, because, because I'm like, what? The Virgo in you, the <laughs> strong, independent woman in you wants to grab the wheel like, by the what? Like, you want to grab the life by horns and take that. Uh -huh. You want to direct it. But some people are not built like you. That's true. And some people aren't built like me. Like if I was the type to be like, I'm focused on direction. This relationship comes totally second. And if you try and interrupt my direction, <laughs> get out of my way. <laughs> this would not work. Yeah. It just wouldn't work. We both have a very alpha mentality, but I think we both. But it doesn't clash. It doesn't clash. And I think it's because I submitted. I think. <laughs> I think I think it's because because naturally I don't have to try to be the authoritative figure because society has already made me the authoritative figure. Mm -hmm. So I had to take a, a self check and realize that like mm. by societal standards, I'm supposed to be at the top. But I decided because you're a man. Yes. Just be, just strictly off the fact that I didn't have to prove a damn uh -huh. thing. Yeah. Like yeah. societal standards <laughs> just put me there. Uh -huh. Didn't have to prove anything from birth. They just put us at the forefront. So I had to take a self check and realize that like, I like your direction. I like the fact that you challenged the directions that I have. Cause there's been a lot of decisions that have probably been terrible decisions that you've challenged and it's taken me to a better place. I think it's just put me in a better spot. Cause like, had I just followed my honestly crazy sense of like, I jumped from idea to idea. Yeah. It's probably just the lack of focus in me uh -huh. or the lack of maturity in me. To the sense where like I, I'm at a young spot where I'm doing a lot of things where I'm just trying, trying this, Everything, trying that, uh -huh. trying that, trying this. And you've challenged those ideas. And if I didn't have someone like you to challenge those ideas, I'd probably be going down a whole bunch of different paths that like lead me to nothing. Mm -hmm. And I also want to say there's a difference between like challenging and crushing someone's dreams. You can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't feel like anything you've ever brought to me I've crushed like no, absolutely not, blah, blah, blah. The challenge is more so, well, how are you going to do this? Well, how's this going to happen? When are you going to, like, yeah. that? there's a difference between challenging and completely, like, belittling someone's ideas. Yeah, and I guess everybody can kind of take this into account. Don't take the approach of, like, if someone brings you an idea and you don't necessarily care for it. Your significant other, in particular. Yes, your significant other. You don't care for it. That's not the time to tell them, oh, I don't like that idea, or mm -hmm. that's a terrible idea. You should not do that. Her questions are more so, okay, she'll accept it. <laughs> like, okay, so this is what you want to do. Now I'm going to see if it's really what you want to do. So do you have a plan? Like, what's your first step? Mm -hmm. What are you going to do to make 
this happen for you? Is it really something you want to do? Can you or do it, it in 10 years? Well, yeah. like, do you it's see just... it happening for 10 years? Are you doing this for money or are you doing this for happiness? Right. Because like if you're doing it for money, you're going to burn out fast. Those are ways to challenge someone without, if even if you don't think their idea is a good thing, there's ways, and that that's a part of, I feel like, kind of emotional maturity, but also that's the more loving thing to do. If you really love the person you're with because so often so many people are just harsh with each other and that's something Mary. like you were never harsh with me but like in the beginning of our relationship I kind of had to teach Josh like be delicate with me be gentle with me in the sense of how you talk to me how you explain something to me if I'm giving him an, an idea I'm really excited about and he's rude about it that's a form of not being delicate with somebody that you supposedly love so like that's why whenever he brings me an idea even if I don't like it I try not to be like a butthole about it because I know this is so, this is something that made sense in your mind or something you were excited about. So like crushing that, that's not like love. Challenging that is love. And if you have kind of all the right answers that might, not right answers for me, right answers for you with your idea. Mm -hmm. And you're able to answer the whys and stuff. Then it's like, oh, okay, this makes more sense. Even if I didn't get it in the beginning. I think it's an obligation of a significant other to challenge the other person. It should be. It should but be. But based off the Bible and why we're talking about this in the first place, submitting is not really challenging. Literally, submission eliminates one person out of the equation of the direction of the family. It's so crazy because, like, I'm very religious, but I don't agree with it. I don't agree with the fact that, like, if we just said, scrap yo, whatever. Mm -hmm. Scrap it. Scrap YouTube. Scrap all that. I'm going to do me. I'm going to do Papa Doe, and we're going to work this out with just the Papa Doe money, whatever. Just follow me, and we're good. We would not be in a better place. I also think it's interesting, too, because when they said that, why I submit to your husbands, they didn't say that the husbands needed to meet a certain requirement to deserve that submission. So, like, what instantly comes to my head, with your mom raising you and your siblings, your dad was a doctor. So he could afford that with her not needing to work and being able to raise y'all. So in that sense, if it's like, why I submit to your husband's, if I, and this is just financially, yeah, we're never taking out everything out else. Like sometimes, yeah, that, that's a little bit understandable-ish. It sometimes plays out in that way because But not a lot of times is what I'm getting at. Like, you're telling women to submit to their husbands, but what requirements do those men need to meet in order for a woman to submit anyway? Do they need to be financially stable or have a financial surplus? And that's taking out mental, emotional, and spiritual. Because who knows where they are with that, but you want us to submit to someone based off what? I think it has, Finances? like, if you're going to submit, it's ladies. not enough. Ladies, if you're going to submit, if you're going to choose that, he honestly needs to strike all those points. He needs to be mentally, physically, emotionally sound, financially sound, spiritually, spiritually sound. Well, if, if that's, well, that's, if, this if, is, yeah, if, that's if you're into if, that, if you're if spiritual you're into the or whatever. whole submission thing, if you're into just giving up the reins to another person mm -hmm. for the direction of your family and your life, then he needs to meet all the criteria that you want. That way you're not submitting to someone that drug dealer ex con <laughs> like, Yeah, like don't submit to a that mean, kind of he stuff. He might be a mean person. I like, don't know any word other than just I don't mean. know how else to explain it. Are really mean sometimes. You need to set you need to write down everything that is worth submitting to if you're going to submit. If that's the route you're gonna if go. That's the if route. If you like me if you like her, find you somebody who's willing to compromise. Mm-hmm. You need to find someone that's willing to join you on the submission train. Because it's kind of a yin and yang submit. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to overpower her, but she's not trying to overpower me. Like I said, we're holding the ball together. Mm -hmm. right here. Together. Yeah. We're holding it together. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I think that's just kind of like getting to know the person you're in the relationship yeah. with. Yeah. You kind of need to establish those kind of standards. Is there a head of household? Who's the head of household? What is the direction of the household? Because this is what works for us. It works for us. Like we both said, we're alpha personalities. Mm -hmm. So we, it had to happen this way. It just, it, it, <laughs> there was no other way this was going to work. This is what, almost five years of us working out the kinks of how this is going to go. Yeah. Because we told y'all, year one, tough. Year two, tough. tough. Year three, tough. tough. Year four, tough. tough. Year five, this is the best year We're, we've we had. We got in there. Honestly, we, man. Man. <laughs> it's, been, it's been tough. And people see the good yeah. out of the relationship. We've always had a beautiful relationship, but we had kinks. Yeah. And yeah, when we're saying tough, we're kind of being goofy, but like they were tough years not every day of the year but you know it was it wasn't it wasn't peaches and cream it wasn't peaches. all the time so that's why we're like saying tough it's but it this was. year has been probably the most like calm 
Yes. I feel like. This is the most we've gone without having one of those blow ups. Blow up power trips. Uh huh. Whereas, like, someone's just like. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> like, I can't do it anymore type mm -hmm. thing. Yes, we've come to points where we're like, hey. I don't know about I this. I don't know. We, we talked about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've come to points like that, but it's not like we're every day like, mm -mm. I'm out of it. No. I'm out. It's more like what we've said now. It's just trying to figure out rules, regulations you to the relationship. You meeting that. Me bar of bars of excellence. And, yeah. And she's had bars of excellence to reach of mine. I have definitely set standards yeah. that she needs to reach because golly, she was a piece of work when we first got in a relationship. You ain't nothing. You are a piece I was a piece of work. I know. I know. When we tell y'all about year four, you will realize I I was a piece of work. But she was also a piece of work. It's in different aspects of our lives, but we both had standards that need to be met. So I'm gonna say an example of I, when I submit it to you and you say an example when you submit it to me. Oh. So a time that comes to my mind when I had to be submissive in this relationship, meet your bar of excellence because you required it of me is learning to apologize. Oh yeah. Ugh. And even now, it comes out more easy. Like last night, I was like, I'm sorry. He was like, that's what I want. I wouldn't have did that like two, three years ago. Like it just comes out Even like then that. though, but when you I know, it was a struggle, it was a struggle. You said sorry and then you threw on a, I know, a reason I know. why. I know, I know. Like, I'm just saying, not, that was something though that I didn't do at all. Yeah, I know. When we first started dating. It was really like pulling teeth to get her yeah, just to like, say the words, I'm sorry. And that was something that I had to submit to, to be with you. Yes. You just had sense. to submit to the standard that I said which is basically like in this relationship, we're not submitting. Accountability. To we're submitting to the rules that we set for the relationship. Mm -hmm. it's not, oh, I like that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So we're not like it's not like I'm submitting to you. I'm just submitting to the laundry list of rules that we have set for this relationship. Uh -huh. So like when we both came to the agreement that like if we're in an argument, that I'm sorry if you're sorry. We both need to be sorry and mm -hmm. we both need to say it. That's a rule that we've set, and now we're both going to submit to that rule. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the authoritative figure. It's like the the relationship it has authority over. Yes, the over relationship us. has the relationship over. runs. Us. The I don't know why I would point it to the yeah, wall I like know. that's the relationship. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that was my time though. I feel like I had I had to learn to let my pride come down a little bit and apologize. But you were worth it though. Yep. For me to submit to the relationship. Yep. If you weren't, then I would just be like, screw it. I'm gonna just keep being who I am, yeah. prideful. And I had to prove that I was worth submitting to. Yeah. To that. You are worth me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Submitting to that rule. Compromising, taking accountability yep. for when I was wrong. I had to submit to the fact that. I can't treat you like I treat everybody else or like my boys. I was so used to treating everybody the same mm -hmm. in terms of like speaking plainly, uh, speaking direct, almost speaking in an authoritative, you should be submitting to me kind of mm -hmm. voice, tone. Mm -hmm. Like you should be listening to me, that's it. <laughs> yeah. I had to submit to the fact that that's not the case in this relationship. That's not how you talk to me. That's not how, uh -uh. That's not how this goes. <laughs> and like, it's not like one day you just like punched me in my face and was like, nigga, you're not going to talk to me like this no more. It's just a matter of like, you go through the same thing over and over and over and over enough time. Either something changes or this is going to crash and burn. You know, I had a better example for you. <laughs> what? We used to hit walls. Oh yeah. Yep. Josh used submitted. to punch stuff when he got mad, y'all. It was never anything I did that made him do it, but like, it still scared the crap out of me. Somebody might make him mad. That's the only way you knew how to express your anger at that time. I was not emotionally intelligent, so like the only two emotions I knew were happiness and anger. So like if I like stubbed my toe or like someone hurt my feelings, I would go like punch a wall, punch a wall, kick or a something, door or something, or like break something. That's it. Mm -hmm. And I said I can't be with nobody like that. So you gonna have to fix that yeah. or or seduce. I could see it in her face. She was scared, and I think that's what. Yeah, because I'm smart enough to know that even if those reactions for you weren't caused by me at all. Eventually down the line, if we were in a long-term relationship, that would be on the table. I had no doubt that we would eventually get into an argument or whatever. Because this is early, early in the beginning of our relationship. Like, within the first few months that I had noticed that about him. Mm -hmm. I don't like that angry stuff. Like, like anger in that way. Mm -hmm. It's fine if he gets angry, but when it goes to, like, a physical side, I don't like none of that. That can go south very fast. And... And that's a, that's honestly like, that's a red flag. Yeah, red flag. it was a red, and I think I told you that. I was like, yeah. that's kind of a red flag for me. Because what's going to happen when it gets to the point where we're together for a long time and I might piss you off to the max that your friends or your teammates have done and now you're hitting wall, like, yeah. you know what I mean? That puts you in a hostile environment. Yes. 
And I wasn't going to live like that. Yeah. I wasn't. I had to tone testosterone down. And you learned a better way, I feel like, to deal with your emotions. Because that was something I kind of required or set the bar for in this relationship, too. Of like, you need to talk to me. Like, Josh, bro, in the beginning of our relationship, man, I this man would not talk. Feelings. I wouldn't would talk not. about my feelings at oh. all. <laughs> would not, like, eating chills. This would never happen. I would never. Absolutely I'd not. I'd be so surface level in my thought process. That you guys would probably get the most basic of basic information. But you nobody would, required that of you. Nobody ever, required. To express your feelings. And he had not, like, I think a lot of you guys know I'm his first girlfriend. So this is the first time he had to learn how to be emotionally vulnerable with somebody. And I promise you, there was like... Boy, that was... Woo! If someone pissed me off, I told you. There was something I, I would either go work out, hit a wall, find something, and uh -huh. like, just get over it. Maybe those emotions were still bottled up inside. And I think we kind of unpacked those as this relationship moved forward. Mm -hmm. It was like a growth process. But she helped me like practically unpack the entire life that I had before we were in a relationship. Throughout the course of this five years. Mm -hmm. Not in one full sitting. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Not in one. This wasn't one, like one long therapy session, but like... <laughs> Over the time, she's like asked good questions like, where does this come from? Why do you think you're this way? Being in the relationship, it's not like I can just ignore her. I have to answer these <laughs> questions. <laughs> so like, I don't know. I've seen benefit in it. And that's probably the reason why I stuck around. Because mm -hmm. like, honestly, I could have just said, I ain't got to explain nothing to you. I'm probably going to get out of this. Stay in your ways. Yeah. Which doesn't help you to grow. It doesn't help me to grow. And I'm big on self-improvement and self-growth. And I feel like you bring that out of me. Which is why I think you're like the best thing for me, you know? No one else challenges me. Thanks, babe. Everyone else just kind of says, this is what you're doing? Okay. <laughs> cool, man. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you look at me like, mm, you sure? <laughs> you sure you want to do that? I just appreciate it. And I don't think I would get that if you were submissive. If you were submissive, you'd be just like the rest of the world. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Right there. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'd be going in circles. I'd be right back in year four. <laughs> be right back in year four. Oh, this was a good topic. Year four is the reason why I'm here in year five. Period. Period. To be totally honest. Oh, I'm excited to do that for y'all. That might be our next eating chill. Get this video to 3,000 likes. Mm -hmm. And we will give you year four. Trust me, you guys honestly want to see year four. Yeah. It's Tea. Year four is the reason why year five was so great. Yeah. It was the last little bit of the storm. Yeah. I think right now we are just gliding. Mm -hmm. I agree. Hmm. I guess we came, we came to a conclusion we on the question. Conclusion. Should we women don't, submit? We don't rock with For submit. us personally? For, it's a it's a basis. It's, it's a like, no. It's a, yeah, it's a relationship and relationship basis. Mm -hmm. And it kind of falls on the ladies. Ladies, if you're willing to submit, find a man worth submitting to. Mm -hmm. Set your standard. And if he doesn't meet that standard, do not submit. If you're not with it, find a man that's willing to... Do you as his equal or wants you as his... Wants, wants you, you as his equal. Wants you mm -hmm. as his equal. And uh, fellas, do better with your selections. <laughs> if you're looking for a real relationship. If you're looking like for a healthy, a healthy, solid relationship yes. in which you find growth, emotional challenging, emotional intelligence, depth. Like, if you want a full spectrum of what a quality relationship looks like and not something superficial as a cheerleader behind you, then you need to find someone worth being your equal. Quality. Quality. Find your quality woman. And find if, your quality man. And if you want to go the route of finding a submissive wife and you want to just take your own direction, then you need to take a look in the mirror and realize that you need to be checking yourself, which is hard because normally you think you're right 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. You never tell yourself, oh, I'm wrong. Someone else has to give you that self-check. But if you're willing to take that route, then you need to be at your top notch, top A1. notch A game. You should constantly be trying to better yourself. Mm -hmm. You should constantly be taking a look in the mirror and asking yourself, what can I do better today? Which is, I feel like it's kind of hard and unrealistic because everybody has that Jahari window. Exactly. So you need somebody that's going to help you find that other window. But, but I mean, that's neither anyway. here nor there. Yeah, so. yeah. But that is all we have for you guys. Really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, get this video to 3K plus likes. I'll say 3K plus. And we will get that year four tea to y'all. That's all we got for y'all. All right. Peace. Peace love. Hey, Grease. And, and we, we out. out.